Welcome to the world today. We're going to be discussing the birth of a new movement in Pakistan, which is different from all the existing political parties in the country, and which has developed very quickly in response to the continuing assaults on the Pashtun communities in Pakistan after 9-11. With me uh, today, are uh, Zakir Hussain, one of the leaders in Britain of the new Pashtun movement, the Pashtun self-defense movement, or the Pashtun protection movement, as they still call it in Pakistan, and Mavesh Ahmed, who studies at Cambridge, is doing a PhD there, and has been centrally involved in building solidarity amongst non-Pashtuns and the global left uh, to understand what is going on. The history of Pakistan is, of course, a tormented one. This is a country whose military refused to accept the verdict of the people in 1970 and preferred to divide the country by waging a brutal civil war in East Pakistan, which subsequently became Bangladesh. The condition and position of the minority provinces in what was left of Pakistan has never been a healthy one. They've constantly been under fire, bribed, cajoled, imprisoned, tortured, and this is a process which has been going on for some time. 9-11 and what followed made it worse. And the reason it made it worse is because the American occupation of Afghanistan uh, saw a huge assault on the Pashtun communities in Afghanistan and Pakistan. The communities, the Pashtun tribes, divided from each other by British rule and the imposition of the Durand Line, which divided Pakistan from Afghanistan. Prior to that, movement between the two parts of the country was very open. But effectively, the uh, area has been under martial law, under military rule, despite the political facade, because it's a strategically extremely important area in the country now. And the people who have been suffering the most in Pakistan are the Pashtuns. This is the historical background to what is happening now, that after long years, a national movement has emerged, the Pashtun self-defense movement, whose aim is very straightforward to defend the human 
and civil rights and social rights of the Pashtun people. And the interesting thing is that with the Pashtun spread all over the country, huge Pashtun population in Karachi, in Lahore, in other cities, internal migration in the search for jobs when the country was being industrialized, there have now been large gatherings of Pashtun people in Karachi, in Lahore, and of course in Pakhtunkhwa, which is the Pashtun province in the country, or part of it, the rest is in Afghanistan. Both of you welcome. Zakir, I'll come to you first. Explain to me the origins of the movement, what triggered it off, and how it grew so quickly with popular support. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Pakhtuns have been on the geographical location which, which, which had always been, which has always been very hot area historically speaking, geographically speaking, and strategically speaking. After the death of uh, Naqibullah Masood. Who was Naqibullah Masood? Naqibullah Masood was a very common uh, social media. He was a model. Model, mm -hmm. yeah. It was due to corruption of the police, mm -hmm. corruption of the organizations. And he was taken and then retired and then he was killed. Mm -hmm. But after his death, it was disclosed that it was not only uh, Naqibullah Masood. There were more than 400 Pakhtuns, mm -hmm. boys, young boys, who had been killed. Mm -hmm. So when that came out mm -hmm. in Karachi, when that came out, they, there was a concern about and people were thinking about it that there are or other missing persons mm -hmm. who have been mm -hmm. uh, taken from uh, the, that uh, tribal area, from Swat area, from other areas. And you, it's astonishing that almost 34,000 persons are missing. Mm -hmm. So the total figure of those disappeared, probably killed, mm -hmm. is 34,000. 34,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, those all things, those all concerns, those surfaced. Mm. And those, it was a spontaneous movement, movement which was launched by the ordinary Pakhtun youth by themselves, mm. taking no, no, no sort of guidance from any political party. It was a spontaneous movement. Mm. And you know, the movement is the best teacher, mm. it's, it's the best guide. During the course of the movement, they got trained on political issues. They on learned through things. their own experiences. Yeah. 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 So who would you describe as the leaders of this organization? And what is their age group? The leadership itself is definitely Manzoor Pashti, who's 27 years old. Yeah. He comes from... Uh, he is He is from the uh, uh, Masoods. And he is part of a generation of young Pashtuns yeah. from what is called the tribal areas, yeah. an area still governed under colonial era laws of collective punishment, yeah. um, areas that around the world are known for drone bombardments, yeah. uh, for being suspected of being hubs of militancy. He is of the generation that have uh, escaped because of war, these areas, and been forced to live in refugee camps. Yeah. And uh, there is literally, uh, has been a huge out-migration of young Pashtuns, of so-called, the, the, from these tribal areas, to other cities around Pakistan because of this war. And every time they come to these other cities, what happens is that because of uh, existing racialized tropes about the Pashtuns, as backwards and tribal and terrorists. You have other ethnicities, especially Punjabi, which is the majority ethnicity of which you and I are a part, um, that they say we don't want Pashtuns here. A lot of the, there's a huge amounts of ghettoization because of that. Similarly, in 2014, when the Pakistan army launched a massive operation called Operation Zarbezam in Waziristan, uh, what we saw, and this was an operation that was launched, you know, with the full support of Barack Obama and David Cameron, with the full support of all of the foreign correspondents, all of the diplomats, um, because the, the idea was, you know, we're going to get all of these militant groups. Uh, people were not warned. They were bombed in the middle of the night. A million people had to flee by foot in the middle of the summer for three days. 
Um, I reported in the refugee camps that they arrived to. There were people whose children had died on the way. There were people who's, who had lost brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers. And a lot of these uh, Pashtuns who had run away, and this is the kind of generation that both the leadership and a lot of the people taking part in the protests are from, um, when, when a lot of these people arrived uh, and afterwards tried to leave these refugee camps, they were met with blockades in all of the cities where, with chief ministers and politicians saying, we don't want them to settle here. Even though these people are technically, absolutely Pakistani citizens and have and every right live to live wherever they anywhere. want. Yes. We even saw uh, the very famous filmmaker Sharmin Obeid Chinoy tweet out yeah. that she doesn't want them to come to Karachi. And she was harangued for, and criticized for that. The kind of racialized tropes about Pashtuns is widespread in Pakistan and justifies a lot of violence by the military, but also by um, a lack of empathy and a lack of knowledge about what's been going on in the rest of the country. The situation is very different, but middle, upper middle class reaction mm. to the Bengalis was not so different mm. in exactly. West Pakistan. Yeah. Especially in Karachi, in some of the Punjabi cities, people felt we're superior to the yes. Bengalis. Our skin is lighter. The Bengalis, after all, are only recent converts to Islam, unlike us. You yeah. know, total yeah. nonsense, yes. by the way. Yeah. And they can't quite say that about the Pashtuns, because, you know, the Pashtuns, if one's going by skin color, are fairer. Yeah. <laughs> but what they can say is that these are tribal yes. nobodies, upstarts, and a class act uh, attitude begins to play. Do we want these people in our city? Mm -hmm. I'm very shocked with what you've said about um, Chinoy that she sent tweeted out like this. The same thing, uh, the other group that's being disappeared, the Baluch, also face similar yeah. kinds of accusations of being backward and tribal and hierarchical. Yeah. But what's interesting about both of these communities that have been uh, violated, disappeared, killed, tortured, is that when it comes to progressive movements and organizing, they have, hu again, have a huge and long history of progressive organizing. So uh, young Pashtuns, uh, especially the ones turning out now, um, are, are organizing in the streets against the military. That is an incredibly radical thing to do in Pakistan. To speak that openly against the military is incredibly radical. In the same way, in the Baloch areas, you have had actually a huge mobilization among Baloch women who have come out, and because boys and men get picked up, Baloch women are now the faces of the missing persons movement. Um, and that defies all of the stereotypes about these communities as backwards and tribal, etc. And in fact, what instead you see is, is, a, is, a, is a, a deeply radical progressive challenge to a patriarchal, a capitalist, imperial supported state and military state. What are the demands of the, uh, the movement now? the Pashtun self-defense movement. In terms of the state, you know, let's say the state sends someone to negotiate, yeah. saying, what do you people want from right. us? Mm. What would the demands be? Zakir, why don't you say uh, that? Uh, yeah, the, uh, very simple demands, very, very simple. Uh, first demand was uh, and is regarding the uh, killing of Naqibullah Masood. Mm -hmm. The culprit has been arrested, but treated as if he is a he is a state guest. Who who killed him? Uh, it was a police officer in Karachi. Rawanwar. Rawanwar. Well, Rawanwar is a well-known semi-fascist thug who's yeah, yeah. responsible for killing lots of people. And he is a tool for the military. Yeah. We know. Everybody knows who and who is protecting him. It is the military who is protecting him. The first demand is regarding him. So that's the first demand that the police officer, Rawanwar, yeah. who killed him, yeah. is tried properly. Properly. And tried and with. investigated properly. Okay, that's the Both first the, demand. This is the first demand. Okay. Second demand is regarding the checkpoints, the, 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 the in check pa posts in Pakhtunkhwa. In Pakhtunkhwa and tribal areas. Both. That is really an example of disgracing a person, humiliating a person, a nation, woman, children, 
equally, everybody is disgraced and humiliated there on those tick posts. Not to take away the dignity of the people yeah, from them, the which happens at all checkpoints. Yeah. You know, Palestine, Israel is a yes. key example. Yeah. So what you're suggesting is that what is going on yeah. in the Pakhtun areas is yeah. very similar to that. Yes. Yeah. And the third demand is, uh, it is regarding the missing persons. And the demand is very general. It is that, okay, bring them before the court according to law. Because the Pakistani constitution says that nobody can be arrested and kept under custody more than 24 hours unless he is produced before a magistrate. After 24, you, you are bound to produce him before a magistrate. But tens, scores of years have passed and there are people who are missing. Mavesh, uh, if we are to try and build Mm -hmm. a solidarity movement mm -hmm. with the Pashtuns mm -hmm. on a global scale, introduce mm -hmm. them to progressive movements elsewhere, mm -hmm. what would your main arguments be? Well, the first thing that I've found very interesting in terms of organizing solidarity work with the Pashtun self-defense movement is that there's, despite a, a lot of organizing all over the world against the war on terror, against imperial intervention, there's surprisingly little that people know about Pashtuns, despite the fact that Pashtuns were some one of the first victims of 9-11. We have a lot of people talking about drones on the global left, and a lot of people talking about uh, US funding for uh, militaries like the Pakistani military. We had a lot of people talking about the Afghan war, and yet nobody knows who the Pashtuns were. Um, and so the first uh, uh, work of solidarity is, of course, to learn about one another and to learn about the sort of lives uh, and homes and experiences of the Pashtuns of Pakistan and Afghanistan, and of course, in this mo moment, particularly Pakistan. Um, the second um, uh, thing is, of course, to learn, I mean, it, it actually makes sense to just be aware of the fact that of the just the, the numbers in terms of how many people have died in Pakistan are of course unclear a lot of times but one number roughly we can say that of the around 60 to 80,000 and it's unclear as a result of both Pakistan military assaults and the United States attacks and yes and militancy um, you know, at least 75% have died just in the Pashtun areas. So what you have is Pashtun populations caught between three forms of violence. You have Pakistani military violence, imperial violence, and the violence of militancy groups. Uh, and the ones who primarily get killed are, are Pashtun, uh, Pashtun peoples. The other thing is that, of course, the Pashtun movement itself has been uh, linked into global left networks for huge parts of its history. But the thing is this, that mm. you know, we have to be very concrete now. Mm. For most people, the mm. idea of a Pashtun mm -hmm. movement is the Taliban. Yes. Who are Pashtuns, mm. there's no doubt about it. Many of whom were trained in Pakistan, sent into Afghanistan, won a lot of popular support, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. So one can't cover all this up. One mm -hmm. has to see how this happened, why it happened. And the fact that the United States hasn't been able to defeat them till mm -hmm. now, despite this long occupation, mm -hmm. is precisely because the Taliban, in their own religious way, represent a form of Pashtun defense? There, there's a very interesting quote in Manzoor Pashtin, who is the face of the movement mm. in his speech in Lahore, where he says, um, soldiers and the Taliban are victims of the generals, and we, all of us, are victims of the soldiers and the Taliban. And what you kind of hear from that is that I think we need to have a much more complex conversation about the Taliban. The Taliban are definitely, there's a militancy going on. And of course, yeah. of course Taliban specifically means student. And so there's people who yeah. do, I mean, so there is, I, I, at the heart of both, uh, of this conflict between on the one hand militaries and on the other hand militancy is an elite of generals who play them up against each other and in the, in the middle of it, ordinary people get caught. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that we live in an epoch where the left has suffered huge defeats. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And in this vacuum, when there is no progressive force <coughs> available or ready or willing to take the lead, many other people do it, who, people who are not progressive at all, like the Taliban and like others. And this is a separate question, of mm -hmm. course, but that the absence of the left is linked to the whole collapse of the Soviet Union, etc., etc. But in the situation which exists today, um, I would argue that the emergence of the Pashtun self-defense movement is a very interesting sign mm -hmm. of the first time spontaneously many, many Pashtuns who are neither in favor of religious militancy, yeah. who are not in favor of collaborating with the United States and the Pakistan army, have come together and are agitating, marching in the streets of Pakistan, not Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is quite significant because if this carries on, it will spread into Afghanistan yeah. as well, without any doubt, yeah. sooner or later. So is there any form of organization? Because even self-organization is organized. Uh, yes, organization is very necessary. and. Uh, uh, this is too much a heterogeneous type of movement that there are people from different political ideologies in this movement. Of course. And those ideologies uh, can't be, I, I think it will be uh, not a good treatment to it to bring it into one party. One party or That's one impossible. Yeah. Yeah. It's National impossible. movements are always like that, by the way. These are genuine problems. Yeah. The genuine problems is that we know, you, as you told, that there were Taliban, Taliban were, were Pashtuns. But this was a force made and created by the, on the first place by the uh, international imperialism and on the second place by the Pakistani military. Yes, no doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah. The operations were oriented against the people. It was, no operation was never oriented against Taliban or any insurgency. It was against the people. By Just the Pakistan suppress. army. Okay. Yeah, and uh, in uh, Pakhtun Khwa and Pakhtun areas, there was, I can't relate those stories. Mm. This Ali Wazir, by himself, his... 17 people of his family were killed, 11 of them on one day. And Ali Wazir was arrested by the, at that time he was under custody. Mm. So they brought him under handcuffs to his father, uncle, cousins, brothers, nephews, all of them. They were murdered the same day, they were killed the same day. So against that, the people would come. It was very natural that, yes, there was left element. Be, uh, an absence of left element in that moment, that would have not been organized in such a fashion. Yes, everywhere, left was there. But the left is very small. Very small. Anyways, its guidance was very, it was really valuable guidance. Yeah. The, the, the leadership of the PTM movement yeah. has a collective, as Zakir uh, Lala uh, explained, a collective of people from different political parties. And many of those political parties are Pashtun left-wing people who have a long history, come from families with long histories of left organizing. And they've played a key role in doing corner meetings around the different cities and rallying people to make sure that they show up. So even though it's small, it's also incredibly significant. Um, in ensuring that you have a very, very clear message coming from the PTM movement as well, yeah. uh, which has been, you know, you mentioned constitutional rights. It's been mm. release our disappeared, mm. stop uh, putting checkpoints and harassing us on checkpoints, um, stop uh, killing us in encounter killings, bring uh, uh, those who are disappeared to courts if there's any accusations against them, otherwise release them. These are kind of very clear and very basic uh, demands that the movement are making and the kind of guidance that uh, or the decisions being made are being made by by a lot of key left Pashtuns. Okay, let's have uh, 
and last questions now. Do you think the movement in Pakistan is going to be able to achieve its goals on its own, or will it need to win over other parts of Pakistan, the Punjabis, the Sindhis, to their cause before any change is possible? Uh, I think no movement can do it, uh, particularly in situation in Pakhtunkhwa, mm. no movement can do it with a solo, solo flight. It will need other people. It will need uh, people from other nationalities. Particularly, the only people who would help are the progressive people of the country. Mm. Th this is straightforward the thing. No rightist is going to do anything <coughs> regarding the lives of the people and uh, other things. It is the lift which will be doing all those things. Though it is very small enough, but it can cultivate a, a thought there. Mm. And that thought, thought is very powerful. It can only be done through those people. And international solidarity, as Mavesh said. Mavesh, what do you think we can do in the United States and Europe on this question? It's unknown. Mm. You know, people don't know it. They don't want to know it. Uh, I find, by and large, that these days so much has changed. You know, mm. you talk about, we talk about uh, 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 the Pashtuns in Pakistan. I mean, under two million people have died in Iraq. People mm -hmm. are dying in Syria every day. 30,000 mm -hmm. people were killed in Libya. Yeah. Because Three of the way in which these countries are run, mm. uh, you know, the citizens get exhausted, tired, the news isn't reported uh, properly, so it's very difficult. Mm. So what would you suggest on this? I mean, there's def of course, there's the issue of sort of overexposure to all of these stories. Not to mention Palestine. Yeah, Israel. Palestine, Syria. Um, they, now, the first thing to remember is that uh, when it comes to Pashtuns, particularly, there are huge Pashtun communities all over the West. They, are, they make up a significant portion of refugees coming into both Europe and, and the US. And what we're seeing actually is that Manzur Pashtin, uh, the leader of the PTM movement, is doing uh, speeches on the phones to migrant communities and workers um, here in Birmingham, mm -hmm. in London, in, uh, in New York, in Copenhagen, and all, all sorts of places. Um, so those, so what we, uh, it, because these migrant communities are from working class communities, they come as a working class. Um, unlike, for example, Syrian refugee communities, yeah. Palestinian refugee communities, who maybe have some sort of highly mm -hmm. educated, very sophisticated uh, people coming in, these are, these are actual working class communities. Um, and so the first thing is to connect with existing communities that are already organizing around the PTM movement and doing solidarity rallies already um, around uh, the Western world. Um, the other thing is then figuring out, uh, you know, what kind of support uh, can one as a non-Pashtun uh, and as non-Pakistani give uh, movements like that. And that can be helping with media exposure, helping with uh, putting in requests or putting pressure on Western governments, because on the one hand, you have these governments talk about human rights, mm -hmm. and then on the other hand, you have them giving, you know, <laughs> funding them in other ways. So one of the solidarity work that is possible is uh, beginning to question governments in the UK and the US, especially, about the kind of support they give for the military, about what sort of demands they have made in the Pakistani military around disappearances and extraordinary rendition. Uh, and making, filing various kinds of re requests to figure out what exactly has been going on. The different uh, WikiLeaks and, and lots of other uh, leaks uh, around what's been going on has showed us that uh, Western governments have constantly and always collaborated with the Pakistani military on getting lists of names of who crosses the border between yeah. Afghanistan and Pakistan. That's been a normal thing, getting full lists of, uh, of who might be potential suspects. Um, and of getting people delivered who they, th who they need to black sites. So these are, uh, you know, the PTM movement has its hands full in Pakistan, in uh, marching there. Um, but the Pakistani military doesn't just exist, you know, in a vacuum. It exists with a huge amount of support and it's completely been inflated. In fact, if you look at um, funding to the Pakistani state yeah. from 47 yeah. on, it was not until 2008 that American funding uh, basically, it, uh, American funding has only come to Pakistan under military regimes, 
in that entire period. Every time we switch to a democratic regime, it goes to zero. Um, and most of the funding goes to the military and it goes to surveillance equipment and weapons equipment that gets used on the bodies of ordinary Pakistanis. Zakir and Mavish, thank you very much for coming. It's a conversation we will continue. Thank you. Thank you. او کنار تا خامه خامه تا بدماش جوری ری خامه خا گونده گری که خامه خا ما وجود نی دخمنی را سر کبی ولی نپویی که مون دتیر یوم یه استی راسی تا پشتانه را پاسی دلی هم دی خبری هم که وی اوریاست لاتروس پریزان کن کرده دی تا خبری کسک آوری در یاست علا اداره اقده زان پویی که لگ دسترگ کلاب کی هو گونه دی کلاب کی پشتون را پاسی دلی دی دا دا خلکو را پاسه دل ندی دا دا ظالم گروان تا دا لاس ور نجدی کیش دا پشتانه